Hi, welcome to a new week of Climbing Daily, coming up on today's show. News of yet another big first ascent in the Candlestick Valley from Robert Jasper, the first part of our exclusive interview with British climber Leo Holding, and we've got a snippet from Epic TV's climbing series, The Tim Diaries. Busy times on Climbing Daily, but first up, we've got news of yet another hard first ascent from Robert Jasper. This time, it's a 250 metre long line on the northeast face of the Gellerhorns, which he climbed with Wolf Ram Liebrich. Robert's had his eye on the route for several seasons now, but he's finally made the first ascent and he's called it the Black Death. He says it's one of the hardest routes in the Candlestick area and we can believe him because he's graded it Water Ice 7 M8. Given that Water Ice 7 is the hardest grade possible on ice, I don't think there'll be many people queuing up for the second ascent. Next up, we've got the first part of our exclusive interview with British climber and base jumper Leo Holding. Leo Holding is one of Britain and the world's top free climbers. He's completed record-breaking ascents in Yosemite as well as extraordinary expeditions as far afield as Antarctica. But Leo's roots are firmly planted in the British climbing scene, where he initially started out tackling the hardest trad routes the country had to offer. What always drew me to trad climbing is that it's not just a sport, it's, it's an adventure and it's a really fast way of, of finding an adventure. You don't go, have to go very far vertically to have real consequences to your actions. As soon as you 10, 15 metres up a vertical cliff, you might as well be in Antarctica climbing an, an unclimbed mountain or in the depths of the Amazon. It's, it's the real deal. The climbing community really began to take notice of Leo at the age of 16 when he made the first on-site of the legendary route, Master's Wall. So Master's Wall is on a cliff called Cloggy in North Wales. Basically, it's very, very famous. There's a lot of history. Some famous climbers, John Redhead, Johnny Dawes, Jerry Moffat, they all had a part of in this historic route. And then when I was 16, I was pretty good and I was pretty ballsy and I found myself uh, in North Wales climbing well did all the classic sort of E5s, E6s, Masters Walls E7, but it's, mm. it's not technically difficult, but it's really dangerous. As it happened that summer, as a, as a kid, my boots were worn out. The guy I was climbing with, who was a guy called Angus Fade, lent me his boots, which were two sizes too big. And now, <laughs> it's probably one of the most stupid things I've ever done, but I was only 16, so I didn't... Slab climbing's all about your feet and precision footwork, yeah. so you don't want to use oversized footwear. <laughs> Another route that I wanted to quiz Leo about was Lord of the Flies, a bold and famous E6 in North Wales. Lord of the Flies, that's another example of, it's technically very easy, it's probably 7A plus or 7B French grade, but it's got a big reputation, you know, British trad climbing has this culture of literature, so you read these stories and if you just showed up as a good climber and tried it, you'd probably be fine, but when you read the guidebook description, it freaks you out. I think it was 1997, it was a really wet summer. And a good friend of mine, Tim Emmett, who I met in Wales and we climbed together a lot, were having a shit summer. And then we got a dry spell one night. Um, so we went up and did these classic routes, Right Wall and Lord of the Flies, at night with head torches <laughs> on. But basically climbing at night, it isn't as hard as you think. As long as you know, route finding is difficult at night. Yeah. But as long as you know where the route goes, you can only see, you know, two square metres. Yeah, your eight foot bubble. Exactly, you know, you need to see where the next hold is, where the next rest is, good footholds, and that's about it. Thanks for that, Leo. We've got part two on the show tomorrow. We're going to leave you with an excerpt from the latest of the Tim Diaries on Epic TV. In this episode, Tim finds an amazing mix line half an hour's drive from his house in Squamish, Canada. See you tomorrow. What do you think, Jamie? Looks pretty crazy. Should be fun. <laughs> I really have no... No idea if it'll go or not, because I've never done it. So I think the only thing to do is go and check it out and find out whether it's climbable or not. Uh, when it was time to actually climb the route and we were going to wrap down, there was not a chance that I was going to do it. It was way too scary, looked way too hard, but I brought my ice axes down just in case. Um, and then I would blade Tim and watching him made me believe that I could do it. He's amazing. He just floated up there and he made it look look way too easy. And uh, it, it inspired me so much that I thought, well, I have to try this. And it was, it was brilliant watching him.
Tarago is a six pitch route whose first climb 12 years ago as an aid climb and the brothers took six days to clean it and red point it. 